Okay, let's talk a little bit about perspective and perspective drawing. Generally speaking, when we take in information visually, we will register things that are closer to us as being larger and things that are farther away from us as being smaller. That's the law or principle of diminishment. And linear perspective utilizes those principles in order to communicate in drawings what actually is or what could be. So linear perspective and all of its concerns helps us communicate visually. When we throw in something that does not have sets of parallel faces or planes, such as this tetrahedron, what do we do? Because we can't use the vanishing points off the edges of this because it doesn't correspond to the geometric concept of a square or a cube. We can't use the idea of parallel planes because there are none. These are all uh, at 60 degrees from each other. So what do you do? From wherever this is, you have to imagine a square, that it's sitting within a square, and this baseline on the form corresponds to one of the baselines of the square. Okay, so here I've drawn a square. So we have four 90 degree angles or right angles. And as we look at the square on the ground plane in perspective, we start seeing that this front edge, which we know is the same distance in reality as the back edge from left to right, the front edge is now appearing longer than the back edge. And instead of appearing as right angles, these angles in our field of vision are appearing as acute angles. And the more we lower eye level, the more foreshortened and the more angled those angles appear. So what you do is basically imagine that square or that cube volume sitting around the form. And you take the angles of diminishment from the cube that you're imagining in order to draw and communicate the form accurately. One thing to understand also is that the tetrahedron, although it might have the same distance from point to point on the baseline, on its back end, it's not gonna meet the far baseline of the square. There's gonna be a distance there, so it's uh, going to fall short. The distance from the front of the form to that back point is shorter than the distance from the front of the square to the back of the square. Now I'm seeing this from this point of view. This is my line of sight. You're seeing from this point of view, so what I'm drawing will be from my point of view and not what you're seeing. You're coming at it from a different angle. So that's the front of the square. And I'm eyeballing the angle which is this one going back into space. And obviously I'm drawing this freehand. And I'm making some adjustments. So that the front edge of that square is longer than the back edge. Now this is the vertus or the apex of the triangle, the pyramid. And I'm just going to take that down to the front edge and this down to the other front corner. And what I'm doing now is eyeballing where that back point is in relation to the back line of the square. So this to there. And I'm looking at what this angle is, this angle right here, and what this angle is. All the angles of the tetrahedron are 60 degrees, so I know that within the square this is now 30 degrees, and the larger angle back there is a 60 degree angle. If you carried this line all the way back where it met the square, that would be a 60 degree angle, and then it's a 90 degree angle. That's in theory, looking at it straight down. I'm not looking at it straight down, but I have to get that idea across.
and I'm obviously also making some adjustments, which is perfectly permissible to do. And I'm just shading in the front plane from your point of view so that uh, we're breaking the angle by virtue of change of color or change in value rather than line. And that's drawing the tetrahedron in perspective accurately to communicate it accurately.